2004, back in Southern California, San Diego. I was an aspiring artist, making moves in the hip hop scene, battle rapping, basically playing the dozens, talking about people's mamas in rhyme form. Back in those days, I felt invincible. I felt like I could do anything, right? So one day, one of my close friends who would always tell me about different shows that were going on, he hits me up. Hey man, what's good? What's good? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, what's good? Yo, man. Hey man, you know about the show? The show coming up, man. What's the name of the show? Oh, this 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 show, man. It's kind of like um, Showtime at the Apollo, man. Only San Diego version. Oh man, that sounds good, man. Uh, yeah. Do you think you're gonna be able to go? No, nah, man. I can't make it, man. Oh, they got a two hundred dollar prize. Oh, what? Okay, uh, I guess I'll be there then. Okay, bet. Okay, man, just come through, man. I think it'll be good for you. Man, sound good, man. Bet, bet, bet. Easy bread. So in my mind, I'm set. I'm going to go to this show. I'm going to perform. I'm going to win that bread, and I'm going to buy me some new kicks. So come that Thursday. I'm walking into the, into the show. And the interesting thing about this is in San Diego, it's a small network of artists. And so like everybody kind of knows everybody. So when I go into the show, it's like, it's, it's, you know how like that thing that we do like when black folks see other black folks in like an, in, in an area and you go like, that kind of thing? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like that, man. Everybody's looking at me like, yo, what's good, what's good? I, I know you, I know you. So I'm feeling myself, you know, chest out. You know, I'm about to take this bread. I'm about to win this money. You know how we're about to do. And before I can go on the stage, I look inside the audience and I see one of the sisters from the masjid that I go to. And I'm thinking, yo, <laughs> how, this is from Allah, like, this is from Allah, yo, what's, how, what is the odds of me like looking so good in front of the sisters from the masjid, like, yo, this is perfect. So <clears throat> they call my name and I was ready to do my, my, uh, my top notch spoken word poetry piece, right? So it's, it's kind of something like this, like, Welcome, Muhammad Oda. Everybody clapped and everything. So I walk up to the stage, I go there. <clears throat> Cause you know when you do poetry, you gotta let the silence set in. <laughs> she was an emotional alchemist who thought that she could turn rolling stones into stepping stones that would eventually lead to her happiness. If I could, boo! on the left side of the, of the room. If I could, boom, from the right side of the room. And then all of a sudden, everybody inside of the room start going, boo, 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 boo. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Like, to the point where I couldn't hear anything. Like, it went, it went like, it went blank. And all I could hear, and I don't know if it was the host or if it was someone in the audience, I heard someone say, get your off the stage. And I was like, oh shoot. This was like so, you know, I, I gotta blank it out because I think my daughter's watching, so I had to, you know, blank that out. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God. So here, here I am, descending down, you know. This is before Be Humble, you know, from, uh, came out with Kendrick Lamar. But I, I, I felt I was in that, I had to sit down. I sat down, wait for the show to end. The time went on, I lost track of the time. I'm just think, trying to avoid eye contact with, you know, so-and-so from the masjid. And finally, the show ended, I go outside, it's too late to catch a bus home. Long story short, you know, I called my mother, she didn't answer, I called my brother, he didn't answer. I spent the whole night, Thursday night, downtown San Diego, depressed, angry, sad and embarrassed. And then the next day, Friday, I wait for the bus to come, I take the bus home, I couldn't get no sleep, I was still thinking about that humbling experience. I uh, get to the masjid, and when I get to the masjid, it's a very close niche masjid in San Diego, the first one in, on the west coast, masjid, masjid al Taqwa. And I remember the uncles and the aunties looking at me, and they looked at me like with that, oh, poor baby kind of look. So I'm thinking to myself, yo, like why are they looking at me like that? Like, it, I could, I, in my mind, they could not possibly know what happened the previous night. That can't be what, why they're looking at me like that, right? So we go into the Pioneer Room. There's a room where we sell the dinners and you know, to raise money for the, 
different activities in the community. And I remember one of the aunties come up to me and she says, baby, you know, some of the greatest musicians have got booed before. And then it's like, oh shoot, she knows. So I know who snitched. That was the Takashi 69 of, of 2004, <laughs> snitched on me. And I'm like, okay, I see what happened. I can't lie. I could, I could, it's, it was almost like she was saying this and I couldn't see her. Do you remember um, Malcolm X when right before he got assassinated in the Spike Lee movie where the lady says, you know, something like, like God loves you. And he's like, don't worry, you'll be okay. God loves you. And he just looks past her like, oh, I, I can't hear anything. That's how I felt when I was hearing her, like, re, like she didn't triggering me with this story that I was not ready emotionally to even talk about. <laughs> like, anyways, may Allah bless her soul. She meant well, you know. So, I was determined from that day. I went home, got some sleep, started looking into the mirror, thinking of different types of performances I could do so that I could return to this show. And lo and behold, about the, the actual, the next week, the next time they had the show, I came to the show. I, I wasn't walking with my chest out like I was before. You know, my chest, I was kind of like this. I was trying to like, you know, trying to hide my eyes a little bit. Um, I, walked to the I walked to the stage, they call my name. The host calls my name, he says, oh, Muhammad Oda. And as I walk up, it's as if he could recognize, oh, this is the guy from last time, he, this last week. So as soon as I got to the stage uh, the following week, he's like, yo, man, uh, you, you you really want to do this again, man? You really trying to try to do this again? Like, okay, okay, like that. I was respect. One week after getting booed for the first time in my life, I end up winning first place in the same spot, San Diego. You know, Showtime at the Apollo. You know what I'm saying? Whoop, whoop, whoop. And I feel like to conclude on this, something that I think is really important that I think about in my life is that like a lot of times, our ability to achieve things is tied not necessarily to our ability to accomplish those things as much as it is our belief in our ability to accomplish those things. And sometimes because of our belief, we close doors that are open, you know? So with that being said, you know, try to look at every failure in your life. That's what, this is what I try to do. I look at every failure in my life as a stepping stone towards success and just keep, keep it moving, you know? And with that being said, as they used to say at, uh, HBO's Deaf Poets to end the night. God bless you. Good night.